Thank you. All right. Joy, I can tell you something. It's just great for me to be here. I just love being here. It's just amazing that I'm here to just talk with you on what autism is really all about. But now, I want you, right now, please, to just rise. And we're going to sing our awesome national anthem. And we sing it because we're this world. An awesome world. An awesome environment. And an awesome culture. Please sing as we can sing this awesome national anthem that we always try to respect and the loving of this singing word. Let's sing. tell my name yet, unfortunately, but my name is Matthew Krausel, and I just want to tell you that I actually have this type of autism that most of you, some of you that I can see, it's probably going to be pretty much the same way as me, almost. I have met some people in my high school. I, <coughs> I attend Wellington High School here in Nanaimo, and I've met a couple of great autistic people over the last several years. And I even peer tutored a Skills for Life class in my first semester of my grade 11 year that I'm in right now. <clears throat> and today I really want to talk to you about <clears throat> what autism really is all about. And I have some things I'm going to read about uh, that will tell you all about what it's all about. <clears throat> but I can tell you what autism really is all about first, which I'm going to read to you right now. Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by impaired social interaction, verbal and nonverbal communication, and restricted and rep 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 repetitive behavior. Parents usually know signs in the first two years of their child's life. I think that, from what I remember, I think that's what happened to me when I was about around there, around that age. The signs typically develop gradually, but some children with autism will reach their developmental milestones at a normal pace and then they regress after that. Autism is highly heritable, but the cause includes both environmental factors and ge genetic susceptibility. S sorry, I sometimes have problems reading some awkward words. In rare cases, autism is strongly associated with agents that cause birth defects, controversies, surround other proposed environmental causes. For example, the vacui hypothesis are biologically implausible and have been disproven in scientific studies. The diagnosis criteria require that symptoms become apparent in the early childhood, typically before they turn three years old. Autism affects information in the brain by altering how nerve cells and their synthesis connect and organize. I've always, before I, and this is how this occurs when it is not well understood. Like, I could tell you something about that. I know throughout my years of my life, 
I've always had troubles with reading comprehension. And that's probably what most people with autism really have struggles with when they're in English class. But first of all, when, what reading comprehension really is all about is what you need to think about when you're reading like a certain story, a novel or something like that, and then you get these sample questions in that reading comprehension assignment. And then you got to try to remember it and then look back in the book and know what it's all about. That can be pretty awkward, to be honest, to tell you the truth on that. It is awkward for me because I remember when I was in elementary, I always had the struggle with it because I remember I had some um, adult aides coming over to my place and helping me out with stuff, especially reading comprehension. We did a lot of um, activities involving reading and questioning stuff on those stories that I was been reading on. But it's, there's lots of other things that people can struggle on, not just reading comprehension, but that's the top one. There could be like math that people could struggle on. I hate math, but it's not really my top thing I struggle on, but I sometimes do good sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna continue reading what I'm at right now. So another thing, I just can't remember to find it. Okay, here we go. So what autism was is it is one of three recognized disorders in the autism spectrum's ASDS, which is what it says in short form in brackets that you might see online. The other two being Asperger syndrome, which lack delays in cognitive development and language and persuasive development disorder, not otherwise specified, commonly abbreviated as PDD-NOS, which is diagnosed when the full set of criteria for autism or Asperger's syndromes are not met at the moment. Early behavior, um, cognitive or speech interventions can actually help children with autism gain their self-care, social, and communication skills by how they focus is pretty much what that's pretty it, all about. Although there is no cure, there's no known cure, there have been reported cases of children who recover from that, but not many children with autism live independently after reaching the adulthood when, I, when people, they get older after high school. They'll become successful, which is a, would be a good sign. An autistic culture has developed with some inter individuals seeking a cure and others believing autism should be accepted as a difference and not treated as a disorder. The thing that I'm going to, when I read that line, um, when um, not many children with autism live independently after reaching their life when they're in an adult age, it, I'm not really going to be um, living with my parents throughout my whole life all the time. But I do right now at the moment, because I'm only 16 years old, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Just because of how tall I am and my facial, like, it doesn't mean that I'm a lot older. But the thing really is, when I um, get a job, when I finish my grade 12 year, work full time somewhere, if I do a lot of work for a year after I graduate, then probably by 2018 or something, I'm probably going to move out to a, probably a single apartment or something like that and just live there for a while. So I'm pretty much not going to follow how most others might do, is just live with their parents throughout most of their life. Luckily, I'm probably not going to be like that, to tell you the truth on that. Um, but, yeah. But did you know that as of 2010, the rate of autism is estimated at about <coughs> 1 to 2 per 1,000 people worldwide. And it also occurs four to five times more often in boys than it is in girls. But about 1.5% of children in the United States, one in 68, are diagnosed with ASD as of 2014, a 30% increase from one in 88 in 2012. <coughs> the rate of autism among adults aged 18 years and over in the United Kingdom is actually 1.1% to tell you the truth on that. 
The number of people, though, diagnosed as has been increasingly dramatically since the 1980s, partly due to changing in diagnosis practice and government subsidized financial incentives for name diagnosis. The question of whether actual rates have increased is actually unresolved, so it's pretty much not, hasn't been solved at all yet. But there's some social development tips I want to tell you about, about autism, and it's always good for me to um, read, tell you this right now, since we're, since I, this is my first day ever telling you about what autism really is. But social deflects distinguish autism and the related autism spectrum disorders, ACD, from other developmental disorders. People with autism have social impairments and of, often lack the intuition about others that may people take for granted. Noted autistic by Temple Granton described her inability to understand the social communication of neurotypicals or people with normal neural development as leaving her feeling like an just on Mars. Unusual social development actually becomes apparent early in the childhood. Autistic infants show less attention to social stimuli, smile, and look at others less often, <coughs> and respond less to their own name. But that, I'm going to guess that's pretty much more when people, these autistic people are at a young age, because older people I know they're going to just be more respectful, just like me. I'm always respectful to tell you the truth on that. <coughs> but autistic toddlers differ more strikingly from social norms. For example, they have less eye contact and turn taking and do not have the ability to use simple movements to express themselves such as deficit to point at things. From a three to five year old children with autism are less likely to exhibit social understanding, approach others spontaneously, imitate and respond to emotions, community, no verbally, and take turns with others. But you know, when people get older, they're going to really um, learn how things are going to work with those type of tips. Like take turns. I know when people get older, like t especially to a teenager age, then people are going to know that better. But however though, they do form um, attachments to their private primary caregivers. But most children with autism display moderately less attachment security than new typical children, although this difference di disappears in children with higher mental development or less severe of ASD. Older children as adults with ASD perform worse on tests of face and emotional recognition. Children with high functional, functioning autism suffer from more intense and frequent loneliness compared to non-autistic peers. Despite the common belief, though, that children with autism prefer to be alone, making and maintaining friendships often proves to be difficult for those with autism. For them, the quality of friendships, not the number of friends, predict, predicts how, <clears throat> how lonely they feel. Functional friendships, such as those resulting in invitations to parties, may affect the quality of life more deeply. I would tell you, when I, every time when I think of um, often proves to be difficult for those who have autism that prefer to be alone, when I think of that, I always think of myself that way. Because honestly, I remember way back when I was in grade three and four, it would have been grade four or five, I used to hang out with people lots and lots of times. But then when I got older, guess what? You ready? I actually changed because because when my sister got older, I have a sister that's 18 right now, she's in university right now. She started to be pretty creepy around most of my friends I liked to hang out with when I started going to high school. Then I found it pretty annoying, so I just decided it's just better off if I don't bring people into my place anymore because my sister's in the house. And then I'm worried that she would creep them as well if I bring people in my, in my place because of that. It could get pretty annoying. Like, I'm going to guess, 
I don't even know if you have any brothers or sisters that's been like that before. They've been creepy around your friends and just loving to talk with them and, you know, stuff like that. And then you get more focused on them compared to you. That's, that's so stupid. I always get so pissed off that way. Because, honestly, when I think of that in my own imagination, I can re even remember it was last year. I was at a vacation Bible school I was helping out with. And then halfway through that week, my sister was telling me, um, was asking me actually, sorry, to come to the BBS with me. And I'm like, why do you need to go? Because you're not really invited. But then even worse, especially on the, the last day, um, she met so many people that she, that loved her except besides me. That's so stupid. And then they started talking, and thank God they don't talk anymore, but I got pretty disappointed about that, to tell you the truth. But at least she's just need, all that she needs to do is um, just act like an old person. That's why I could say, then she could be a blessing. Anyway, I want to move on here a little bit here. So, there are many anecdotal reports, but few systematic studies of aggression and violence in individuals with ASD. The limited data suggests that in children with intellectual disability, autism is associated with aggression, which is a destruction of property and tantrums. Some pretty good social development tips on that. Like, honestly, there's quite a lot, but it's stuff that you'll learn pretty much from right now. Because I'm going to tell you something. Once you get out that door today, you're going to learn pretty much almost everything about what it's all about. And then tomorrow, I want people to wake up and I'm just wanting to change and just act a little different by your voice. Change your voice a little bit if you're speaking like a young person. But not for all of you, but I'm saying it's a good idea to do it. It's not saying it's a bad idea. It's if you don't want to do it, I don't care, but if you want to try my advice, do it. Do it. It's a really easy thing to do. Just wake up in the morning and then just change. That's what I do. In fact, I'll tell you something. I've been doing lots of changes with myself and my brain. Even though I, ha even though I am autistic, to tell you the truth on that, I always try to um, change my life a little bit. Because I know um, when I was in my when I was still in high school, I remember a couple of years ago I remember starting to do this type of thing called tickle fights, and people actually found it very interesting. But then actually a few weeks ago, I actually wanted to change that up because the reason why I'm going to tell you something, and I want you guys to listen to this very carefully. The reason why I wanted to become a better friend and the only re the way the only way I could be able to make better friends is by not doing tickle fights because when I still did that people most people found it pretty uncomfortable so pretty much what I was really doing was I was thinking to myself a few weeks ago hey the only way I could be able to not be a good the only way I could be a good friend is just by not doing those tickle fights anymore then once I did that, then everything completely changed. So you get what happened? I, I was, the only way I got to be a better friend like right now is because I changed. I changed so I could be more respectful in my life. And I love being respectful. I love people. People are amazing. Especially people are my age or older people. I just love making new friends. New friends are the best for you. It's, they're always amazing. And I'm going to tell you a few, read a few more guidelines here. I want to read one about communication and then some other symptoms and then that, that's what I'll close with. So first, some communication. About a third and to a half of individuals with autism do not develop through na natural speech to meet their daily communication needs. But differences in communication may be present from the first year of life and may include delayed onset of babbling, unusual gestures, diminished responsivenesses, and vocal patterns that are not synchronized with the caregiver. In the second and third years, children with autism have less frequent 
and less diverse babbling, constant words, and word combinations. Their gestures are less often integrating with words. Children with autism are less likely to make requests or share experiences, and are more likely to receive, repeat others' words. Which I'll tell you, that's actually rude to tell you the truth. It's not really good to repeat what someone really says, like, say someone was saying, I like you, and then you, to someone else, and then you say, I like you out loud to her. That's rude. I would never do that. Like, hope, not, hope none of you ever try that, because that's actually pretty rude to tell you the truth. And then the thing that's also stupid is they can, some people can even reverse pronouns. So they just say something like, um, they say, I love, instead of I love you, they could say, I love I or something like that. That's just reversing the pronoun. That's weird, right? But joint attention seems to be necessary for the functional speech, and the flicks in joint attention seems to distinguish infants with ASD. For example, they may look at a pointing hand instead of a pointed at obje object. <coughs> and they constantly fail to, to, to point at objects in order to comment on their share and experience. Children with autism may have a difficulty with imaginative play and with developing symbols into language. Let me tell you, that does take lots of practice, to tell you the truth. It's just the learning of it is what it needs to be good with. In a pair of studies, high-functioning high children with autism ages of 8 to 15 performed equally well as an adults better than individually matched controls at basic language tasks involving vocabulary and spelling. Both autistic groups performed worse than controls at complex language tasks such as figurative language, comprehension, and in, in, inferences. As people are often sized up in, initially from their basic language skills, these studies suggest that people speaking to autistic individuals are more likely to overestimate what their audience comprehends. These are two tips I'll tell you students. And these are things you should try to think about once you walk out the door today. And once you think about this later. You always want to think about this. Now I want to finish off with some other type of symptoms before I finish. Autistic individuals may have symptoms that are independent for the diagnosis, but that can affect the individual or the family. An estimate of 0.5% to 10% of individuals with ASD show unusual abilities ranging from their splint, splinter skills, such as the memorization of trivia, to the extraordinary rare talents of prodigious autistic savants. Many individuals with ASD show superior skills in per perception and attention, relative to the general population. Sensory abnormalities are found in over 90% of those with autism and are considered core features by some. Although there is no good evidence that sensory symptoms different autism from developmental disorders. Differences are greater for unresponsibility, for example, walking into things, than for over-responsibility, for example, distress from loud noises, like especially things that can be annoying at times, or for sensation seeking, which would be like rhythmic movements and stuff like that. An estimated of 60% to 80% of autism, autism people have more, have more signs that include poor muscle tone, poor motor planning, and toe walking. The flicks in motor coordination are persuasive across ASC and are great in autism proper. I just want to read one more important thing to you right now. Parents of children with ASC have higher levels of stress. Did you know that? It's, it's true. I definitely agree with that. But siblings of children with ASD report greater admiration of and less conflict with the affected sibling than siblings of unaffected children and were similar to the siblings of the children with Down syndrome in these aspects of the sibling relationship. 
but however, they reported lower levels of closeness and intimidating than siblings of children with Down syndrome. Siblings of individuals with ASC have greater risk of negative well-being and poor sibling relationships as the adults are. These are pretty true things of what autism can be really all about. But next week, I mean, tomorrow actually, not next week, <laughs> but tomorrow I want to really talk of how you could have autism in a family home, like where you're living at right now, if you had someone with autism one day. Something you can learn about, but you'll find out tomorrow. And I better say thank you very much for checking this out, and I'm really glad to be here for the first time. I just wanted to say just thank you very much. Thank you.